Greetings everybody and today we're going to be evaluating this integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x to the n dx, where our n is from 0 to 1 or between 1 and 2. So basically the interval from 0 to 2 non-inclusive of the endpoints and we're also excluding 1 because for the method we're going to be using it doesn't really make sense to include 1 as an n value. But in general, it does work for when n is equal to 1, because if you plug 1 into this n, you're just going to get the standard Dirichlet integral, which evaluates to pi over 2. So this integral is more or less just a variation on the Dirichlet integral. Uh, we just have this extra n up here in the exponent. Um, but uh, yeah. So in order to evaluate this integral, we're going to be using a pass to result. So in a previous video, I've shown that the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x to the n, um, dx is equal to, well, just this top expression over here. And that's the case where n is greater than one, but I haven't shown in that video, um, but there's also this other way to do it. I think using Mellon transforms or something like that, um, where you can show that it also works for negative n values. But if you have n being negative, you also introduce a negative sign at the front. And in fact, this, all this negative sign does is to make sure that the whole thing itself is positive because without this negative sign, um, this expression would be negative. So you just introduce a negative sign to keep things positive. Um, so that all that there really is to it. I think I called that video the generalized for null integrals. You can find the proof using uh, complex analysis to that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump straight into the solution. So our goal in this video is to kind of transform this integral into this integral. And in doing so, we can basically use this result over here to evaluate um, our original integral. So our original integral, I called it i. So let's see, i is equal to, I'm going to rewrite that integral a little bit as the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x times x to the minus n and dx. And our goal over here is to get rid of this x to the minus n times dx part over here. And notice we also have sine of x and we have an x inside of here. We don't really care what happens to that x because when we do a bit of a substitution, it's going to turn into x raised to some power and we know exactly how to deal with that. So how exactly do we get rid of x to the minus n dx. We want to think of some function such that when we differentiate it, we get this differential x to the minus n dx. And let's just choose a variable, let's call it t. If we let t be equal to, I guess, an antiderivative of x to the minus n, uh, we could just go with x to the one minus n, doesn't really have to be an antiderivative. But the idea is we choose some function such as this one, so we just add one to the power. And what happens when we differentiate it? Well, this power reduces by one and we only get x to the minus n times dx, which is what exactly what we have over here, which is quite nice. Um, I actually forgot uh, we have to use the power rule properly. So bringing this power down, it's supposed to be one minus n x to the minus n dx. So in fact, this section over here matches up with what we have in the integral. And now to isolate that section, we just take dt over one minus n, and that's equal to x to the minus n dx, like so. All right, so we have this part taken care of. We know it's going to evaluate to dt over one minus n, but how about our x in here instead of the sign? Well, we'll just manipulate this expression a little bit over here. We take the one minus nth root on both sides to get that x is equal to t to the one over one minus n. So this is, I agree, it's a bit of a weird substitution. It did take me a while to kind of think of this and figure out how things would work out nicely and all that. But uh, yeah, this substitution does work out nicely because as you can see, once you plug it in, we're going to get the integral and let's worry about the bounds later on, but we're going to get the sine. Now X becomes a T to the one over one minus N over here. And then X to the minus N DX, it's going to turn into DT over one minus N, which is DT. Then out here, we're just going to have a one over one minus n. And how about our bounds? This part is a little bit tricky because the orientation of our bounds can depend on what values of n we take. Because notice if n is on zero to one on this interval zero to one, then 
our exponent over here will be positive. So if we plug zero into X, for example, we're going to get zero. And similarly for infinity, we're just going to get infinity. But if N is between one and two, then you're actually going to get a negative power up here. And the integral, the orientation will be reversed because if you have zero raised to a negative power, it's infinity. And if you have infinity raised to a negative power, it's a zero. So we have to kind of consider two cases over here. We have case one. Um, which is n is between 0 and 1. And we also have to consider case 2 when n is between uh, 1 and 2. And what happens when n is between 1 and 2? Well, I just outlined it before. We're going to get the same thing, um, but we also, but our bounds are going to be reversed. We're going from infinity to 0 of the same integrands. So sine of t to the 1 over 1 minus n dt and we can reorient the bounds a little bit by introducing a negative sign, so 0 to infinity now, and we just introduce a negative. All right, this is very nice because notice that we have our integrals in the form integral from 0 to infinity of sine of our variable to some power, and we know exactly how to deal with that using what we have over here. So case 1, notice that n is positive, which means we're going to be using this top expression. So if we plug everything in, well, we have this constant one over one minus n out the front. And then our power, or this n in this case, is one over one minus n. So basically all you have to do is plug one over one minus n into all these n values over here. So all three of them. So first of all, we're going to get one over one over one minus n. Uh, I guess I'll put it in brackets, just to make it clear. And then we have a sine of pi over two and then one over one minus n. And then we have a gamma function of one over one over one minus n, like so. Okay, and I guess we'll worry about case one first. We'll um, do case two later, but notice that one minus n and one over one minus n over here will cancel each other out. And so over here, we have sine of pi over two, and then we have this one over one minus n. We can flip this up to the top. So bring the one minus n to the numerator that's going to become sine of pi over two times one minus n, like so. And then we have gamma function. And if you have one over a fraction, that's just the reciprocal of the fraction. So we just get um, one minus n in the gamma function. And in the sine function over here, notice we can distribute things a little bit. This is sine of pi over two minus pi over two n times the gamma of one minus n. And there's this identity for the sine function, where if you have sine of pi over two minus something, that just becomes cosine of that something. Um, or you can just show that result using the um, angular sum identities whatsoever. And you're going to find, I guess I'll put it back up over here. You're going to find that you're going to get, well, cosine of this angle, which is pi over two times n times the gamma function of one minus n. And that's basically the answer for case one. And you're going to see the same thing for case two as well, because notice for case two, this um, power is actually negative because if you have n being between one and two, then you can check for yourself that this power is actually negative. So we have to use um, the second expression instead. So first of all, we have this constant out the front, which is minus one over one minus n. And then we basically just use this expression. We plug a one over one minus n into all these n values. So first of all, we have another minus one over um, one over one minus n, and then sine of pi over two, one over one minus n, and then gamma of one over one over one minus n like so. And notice, one over minus n and one over one minus n will cancel each other out and these negatives will cancel each other out and overall you're back to where we were with um, this case one because they're going to be the same thing anyways so these cases in the ends don't even matter whatsoever um, this integral our integral i just evaluates to cosine of pi over 2n times the gamma function of one minus n and as long as n is on one of these two intervals, then we can just use the same formula to figure out the integral. And of course you can see that it actually makes sense that you shouldn't include one in here because if you plug one in, 
then you're going to get cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, and gamma of 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is undefined. Unless you want to um, evaluate that limit, then you can. But I guess the best way to write the solution to this integral is this integral will be equal to this piecewise function, which is cosine of pi over 2n, gamma of 1 minus n for n on this interval, so 0, 1, union 1, 2, or pi over 2 um, for n being equal to 1. So I guess that would be the final result for today's video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and up until the next one, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.